The Brandon Peters Show may contain explicit language and detailed plot points. For more information on the show, stay tuned to the end of the episode. Here's Brandon. All right, and it's time to close the week with a song. Joining me again is the host of this means podcast, Jonathan Graves. Hey, Brandon. Hello. All right, so Do the Evolution comes from Pearl Jam's 1998 album Yield. The singles from that album were Given to Fly and Wishlist. Do the Evolution was not released as a single, though it charted. At number 33 on the alternative song charts and number 40 on mainstream rock charts. And it was nominated for a Grammy for best hard rock performance. Do you know who it lost to, Jonathan? So I was no. trivia who? on these who? Grammy losses and wins. It lost to Page and Plant Most High. And uh, I don't know that. Yeah, I don't. I can't recall <laughs> that one. I remember Page and Plant getting back together, doing an album was a big deal, but I don't remember the songs from it. Uh, the other nominees in this category that year were Psycho Circus by Kiss, The okay. Dope Show by Marilyn Manson. Know it. And Metallica's Give Me Fuel, Give Me Fire, Give Me That Which I Desire. Ooh! That's how, that's how that one went, right? That was, a, that was a good impression. It was a good one? All right. This is my head feel. <laughs> um, so the song is significant that uh, it wasn't a single, but uh, they produced a music video which, which debuted in August after I the had singles. Never seen, I had you never, never seen, seen that. No, and it blew my mind. Okay, so this was the first music video Pearl Jam did since Oceans in 1992. Uh, the song Jeremy, their video for Jeremy, got so much overexposure on MTV that Pearl Jam swore off music videos. That Oceans video was already in the can before that. So Because oh, okay. back in the day... Uh, a lot of times in the album build up promotion, they'd shoot all the music videos and then they just hold them off for release. Throw so like you'd shoot like three, and those would be ready to go as the release drop strategy happened. And yeah, then if yeah. your album was still picking up or needed more steam, you go back and shoot a couple more. So Oceans is the last one released, but it was Jeremy that pissed them off. Which Jeremy back in the day was like. And, you know, there's the on the hour, but it was almost on the 45 minutes back in 1992. So it pissed them off. But they came back and did this one randomly after pretty much this album had run its course. Um, and uh, it's co-directed by Kevin Altieri, uh, who Batman, yes, it is. Batman the Animated Series. Yes, a, b- a big hand in that creative team. Mm-hmm. And the look and style of the Batman Animated Series is also... Thanks to him, um, uh, you know, some other people as well, but but he is credited on almost every episode of the animated series. Yeah. So to see his work um, outside of that in this music video was uh, incredible. Like, yeah, it's it's unabashedly rewatchable and just enjoyable on every level mm-hmm. also thank you for introducing me to this because <laughs> i have watched it several times yeah and i've added this song to a number of playlists so thank you for that awesome uh yeah he joins todd mcfarland directing it's as well um he of spawn and you know that marvel fame yeah he's from- done some stuff <laughs> he said he's he's said some things and i i i think he's got some mental issues but yeah Uh, yeah yeah um so it's animated um this like i caught this late at night on i remember i remember when it happened like i don't know if i saw the premiere or anything but i remember it was late at night on tv and i caught it in the like after it must have just started or something but there's this animated video this rock song and like i remember my mind going what when the end came up because you know music videos would have like the titles come up to yeah. say who you know who i was you know pearl jam blah, blah, blah. and when i saw pearl jam I'm like what the fuck i'm like wait a minute because they <laughs> didn't do music videos i'm like wait they did a music pearl jam did a music video because they did some little like they had a song on no code called lucan 
okay. they had like some like little live clip that played no one picked up on it but although it's a badass song um it wasn't really a music video but this was a music i was like pearl jam did a damn music video what like it was blew my mind because they notoriously they use tick master they do music but they were like oh against everything um they weren't even like touring much of anything as well it was crazy time but are you a pearl jam fan at all or I am. I am uh, more, you know, in, in the background, uh, not so mm-hmm. much like I'm going to go buy their albums. Um, but whenever I hear a song that I like, uh, you know, easy flow or, or even flow, um, mm-hmm. or, uh, or this, <laughs> um, I was just like, you know, th- they hit me a certain way and I'm like, yeah, I can like jam out to this. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would say, you know, tangentially, I'm a fan. Um, I don't usually go after their stuff. Mm-hmm. That, uh, I come across it or if it's playing on the radio, definitely like, I'm gonna turn it up and rock out. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I Pearl Jam is one of my favorite. Uh, probably would fit in maybe top ten favorite bands of mine. And oh, wow, okay, one, cool. one of the best concerts I've ever seen. I've seen them one time in concert. It was 2010, uh, May of 2010, and it was I believe their album they were promoting was Backspacer, but like. I was one of the best shows I've ever seen. Uh, they're just, they're a hell of a live band. Um, the thing I like about them is they change the sets up every night. So you don't get the same thing the night before you don't, you don't see the same thing in LA that they saw in San Francisco the night before it's all shuffled up, changed certain songs come out for one night and then go away. I love that. That's what I love about. Those are my favorite touring bands are the ones that change it up because I know that I saw something people that unique yeah yeah no I, that's great that's great uh but they're really good although my qualm with them is like i think i think they have an issue with even flow, but even flow sounds like shit live they play it really fast i think it was mm. probably always that way because their debut album 10 which everybody knows and everybody like loves like the sound of that the sound of verses which was their follow-up and like vitalogy was closer to what pearl jam they got really tense really polished really so I want to believe the live version of even flow is what it is. And they slowed it up for the album version to make it sound prettier and all sorts of stuff. But, oh. um, but yeah, like this, uh, but this, this video, yeah. Surprised me when they, that came out. Um, how, how old the, were you, uh, in 98, 98, I would have been 16. Okay. Okay. Cool. 16. Cool. I, I bought no code when that came out. Um, I think, <laughs> I think no code, uh, was the, I own 10, uh, but that was the first, like no code was the first new Pearl jam album when I was like aware of like Pearl jam. Um, and it came with these like collector Polaroids. It was a really weird thing. Um, but, um, yield, I, I don't think I picked up yield. Um, but this just stunned me when that happened. I guess I was 16 years old. Um, and but the, this video okay the, i picked it because of the animation i was you were going to get yes. an animated video so <laughs> i was like you. i was like it was this one and uh there's like two others but i was like you know what this one said this 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 has a lot to say this video this oh, one yes. and oh, this, yes it's very dense <laughs> it, it oddly predates the matrix by almost a year um, i was gonna say it felt like because there's a moment where a guy rips open his entire body suit and he reveals like a guy another guy wearing glasses underneath yeah. him. and i was like was this used as reference for the matrix because there are certain things in here that i was equating to visuals within that first movie which right. i adore and love and you know uh <laughs> movie bible <laughs> there you go yeah um, for structure and everything um but uh but yeah i was watching this going oh there's like some heavy pulls uh visually from this in modern media and mm-hmm. another one is uh, very much akin to something you'd find in Blade Runner um, about like the uh, the vast vistas of desert and everything like that going on. Um, and I, I wanted to bring up this really funny story, if I may. Um, when I was yeah. doing research on this music video, I found a Vox article written by somebody way younger than us. Okay. <laughs> And they were breaking it, breaking down the segments of this music video. Oh no! Shit. Okay. And at one point, 
they were talking about how clean the animation was and how crazy it must have been for them to edit on computers the size of houses to make this animated music video because they thought in 98 the computers were sizes of houses still oh and wow i was like wow this person is so out of touch <laughs> But, um, but, you know, there is a <laughs> section of people who think the 90s had giant computers. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, it was the 60s. They had the big machines that, exactly. were, that exactly. had blinking lights and, and Listeners, and I had three and... computers in my house in 98, and they were about the same size as a laptop right now. Maybe a little bit bigger, but they had a back for sure. Well, they also like the computers back then. The towers today are still like the desktop towers back then. Oh yeah, they, exactly. you know, like yeah. it's like <laughs> there, there's no change in there. Um, that, I just yeah, found that really funny. Yeah, I, I will say this. This might be. It wasn't until I was like really going through it and writing down and, and analyzing the video that I was like, "Well, this is the deepest video I've done since uh, I did uh, testify by Rage Against the Machine about oh, a year and yeah. a half ago." Which, oddly enough, that video happened to. We happened to record that uh, episode days after the insurrection, so oh, wow. <laughs> there's a lot to talk about. But this is this is cutting deep too. I mean, it is. It's basically for those who haven't seen this video and it, go watch it. It's crazy. Um, basically, goes from Earth, like from the Big Bang to the first atom to like all this stuff to prehistoric Earth through the end of Earth. Like it's pretty much it. Um, to very dark look at it. Uh, it shows the horrors of the world that we still fear today. Yeah. <laughs> it's even uh, the, like the rejection of math and science. Um, you see like concentration camps and slavery. And like, there's this, <laughs> there's a part where they show the sea of crucif uh, crucified people only to show it's in a box that this guy is selling for five bucks. Um, there's like, I, one of the brilliant parts is all the different types of leaders. Um, standing at podiums shouting looking all the same like there's a there's like a uh, like a pope there's like a business guy there's all sorts of like different like people that you'd probably be like support be like oh crap they're all the same aren't they um <laughs> it's it, it's a lot to take in and then when you start to break it down and it's, it's like i'm sitting here typing I'm like oh my god 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 like all this all sorts of stuff like the ca cavemen dancing around the fire that Meshes with drunk men, drunk homeless guys dancing around a fire, which clansmen dancing around the fire. Like it's in crazy. It's just showing, I guess they say people, you know, people are just monkeys. They all just copy, do the same or something. There's a lot to be said in this. <laughs> a picture is worth a thousand words. And this video is worth over a billion yeah. um, for sure, because it does hit on a lot of contrivances uh, that we deal with on a day to day basis, but also the controversial aspect of this music video, obviously it came out in 98. And so like, if you put this in, in front of a bunch of people, like if, if this video went viral today, can you imagine Twitter? <laughs> um, because it, it talks about so much of the, the rage and the conformity uh, that we feel as a human species um, just in, in broad strokes. Mm -hmm. And it's those broader strokes that lead to misinterpretations. Right. And I feel like there's so many broad strokes in this that it will inevitably be argued about um, no matter who sees it. Um, there are certain aspects of like uh, relating the, um, the corporate uh, cubicle life to yeah. slavery. Mm -hmm. And like that doesn't translate as well as if they had gone deeper into uh, dissecting slavery versus um, like police, like reform and everything going mm -hmm. on now. Uh, but obviously, you know, they didn't have that to pull from. Uh, they were just doing broader strokes over all humanity. So, you know, that that's the that's the give and take of doing something like this. Mm -hmm. But again, it is done with such artistry that it's so beautiful and you can't really look away from it. Um, and that's that's what led me to really listen to the song again and again, 
mm -hmm. um, to, to really pull out those, uh, those lyrics that really spoke to me. Yeah. I had speaking of lyrics. Yeah. I had a couple that were like, um, yeah, admire, admire me, admire my home, admire my son. He's my clone. And then, uh, this land land is mine. This land is free. I'll do whatever I want, ir but irresponsibly it's evolution, baby. And then there was the, I'm a thief. I'm a liar. There's my church. I sing in the choir. Hallelujah. <laughs> like, damn. So it's, I, and it's, it's great. Like this came and went, I, I know it was nominated for a Grammy, um, and did chart, but like the, the video, if I would say, do you remember the video for do the evolution program? Like, no, what, what? Like no one remembered. Like it, it's just brushed off today. It would have stopped the tracks for a moment. And so like, like Pearl Jam's new video or sub Pearl Jam with more popular relevant type group. I, I think Pearl Jam is probably still relevant, but I'm just saying someone people are looking for, like this would be akin to Childish Gambito. This is America. That video that kind of like stopped the tracks. Like this that's exactly been... what I thought of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But nobody cared back and no one saw it back then. Granted the world was at like 98 is a different place a way where we're, you know, this pre nine 11, which a lot of people don't realize, like we were almost in the, is history done happening? Are we bored now for eternity type? Uh, and I'm not, I, you know, that lifestyle might be nice to go back to someday, but like 2001 changes everything. Like at this point, people probably ignored it. Didn't think it was a big deal or just like cool animation. Ooh, dark story. It's like, you're living in it. Not, not even realizing, <laughs> you know, like, it's crazy. This is your life. Now people would pay attention. People would see it. People would dive into it more. This is just like cool McFarlane animation, man. Like, I don't know. It's just yeah. weird. Like this is a, this is the kind of like big message. Stop everything you're doing. We need to talk about this. And it wasn't then at all. <laughs> it, it wasn't, but it also feels like a message in a bottle now, mm -hmm. you know? And like, whenever we open it and we watch it, we're like, some of these things are true today, but the, the guy I, with the VR headset and the uh, simulation oh, yeah. of the woman getting abused and stuff like there, there's some strong content in here yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want to like, you know, bypass that lightly, but you know, thinking about 98 mm -hmm. and how this was, what was, I mean, obviously the matrix came out a year later, American beauty came out 99 yeah. as well. And like all of these things that were boiling under the surface of that right. suburbia. Um, yeah. They're like, it's, it's very deep. It's very dense. There's a lot to, to dissect um, in it, but I, I don't want to like beat a dead horse here and, uh, yeah. and just park on the, the negative of it. Um, there's a woman that shows up and I like how the, the creation of the world is intercut with the, the female singer mm -hmm. um, or the, the female um, person that we're going along with. There's a, uh, a woman the that's journey. there from the beginning, from yes. like the start of time, there's this short haired, uh, the, she's got short, dark hair, kind of, you know, she's your, she's the guy that like, you know, like, oh, the, the anime guys in the nineties would be like, oh man, that cartoon character's hot. You know, like that, all that type, <laughs> that type of type of thing. There's a moment when she's dancing and later in the song and you, for a couple of frames, her, her face turns into a skeleton. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, so fascinated behind the meaning of that. <laughs> and like, what went into that? You know, when she wears an army helmet at one point, like, yeah, they yeah. do slight things to her and put her in specific places in there. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, you have to wonder if, she like i i was trying to like what does she represent here but i couldn't i didn't haven't dug into that i haven't got there yet but i'm like there's something specific with her that's there i don't know if it's a positive thing or just a she's a observer type thing but yeah right. i got tank girl vibes uh whenever yeah. she had the helmet on and sure and yeah but uh but yeah definitely there's there's definitely something there yeah i yeah this like i I wanted to do Pearl Jam and I thought it would be like Jeremy or something. And I'm like, this was the best possible choice. I think of yeah, their yeah. videos of unknown one um, yeah, maybe. And just this so much here to like dig onto. I like, I 
like people should just check it out because it's like it's crazy. Like, <laughs> and the animation's great. Uh, the like animation is hand drawn, McFarlane anime type type stuff. It's it's really it's really cool. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely and the song rocks. Yeah, the song rocks too. Yeah, it's definitely definitely. And Eddie Vedder has uh, apparently commented that he like. He likes this song a lot because it, it's one of the one of their songs that he can just listen to and it feels like he's not listening to his own band. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I that. also love the progression because it starts off uh, with um, smaller notes and like it, it doesn't feel like a full song until the end. Yeah. Um, they, they add instruments and they add uh, a bombasticness. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the way he sings is even subdued in the beginning uh, where it's almost talking. Yeah. Um, instead of singing. And then by the end, he's screaming. And that progression is so fascinating to uh, hear and, and witness mm-hmm. uh, through our ear holes as well. Um, so, you know, that adds to the to the dichotomy of what goes into this song, because it, it, it is a statement piece. It is something that he wanted people to start talking about or thinking about. But the way that the the song unfolds is also an, a story into itself. Yeah, for sure. And they recorded this song. Um, Jeff Ahmet, their bassist, did not record bass on the Stone Gossard. Uh, their one of their guitarists um, wrote the music and and did the thing. So maybe that's why Eddie feels that way about it. And it's kind of different because they yeah they have a little bit of a change up with the lineup um, on it. But yeah, it's a groovy song. Do the evolution for sure, for sure. Um, but yeah, that'll, uh, that'll do it for us this week on the show. Um, Jonathan, thank you for spending your time here, uh, on the Red Peter show. And before we head out to the weekend, I'll let people once more know where they can find your stuff and keep up with you. Thank you again. And if people want to follow me, you can head over to Instagram over at that means podcast or Facebook, or you can follow me on Twitter at this means pod, or you can follow myself at the dark pilgrim on All Twitter. Right. All right. And I'm on Twitter and Instagram at brad 4 kuhd We're going to work at whysoblue.com. You know what? I am taking, again, another week off in preparation for Summer of 82 at 40. So uh, you're going to have a blast with it. Trust me. Um, so until then, stay film positive. Thank you for listening. The Brandon Peters Show is a Creative Zombie Studios production. Produced by Brad Shoemaker and Brandon Peters. Written and edited by Brandon Peters. Announcer vocals by Jessica Olsman. Theme song by Metavari. Web design and show art by Brad Shoemaker with Brandon Peters. All music and clips featured in the episode are property of their respective studios and no infringement is intended. Additional information on this and other episodes at brandonpetersshow.com. For any inquiries, press opportunities, or sponsorship, contact mail at brandonpetershow.com. The show is available on Apple Music, Spotify, or anywhere podcasts are found.